So, welcome to the session in which we now have this young man sitting with me who had posed a question in the previous session and I would like him to answer the question with a little prompting from me at points. So, he had posed a very important question. We had looked at several properties in the context of continuous systems, namely additivity, homogeneity, shift in variance, causality, stability. And the natural question that we have is, do these properties make sense in the context of discrete systems? And I am going to ask him to explain what he thinks additivity would mean in the context of discrete systems. So, Pratik, how would you, what, what would you think, how would you try and map additivity as a concept to the context of discrete systems? Please make an effort and I will prompt you. So, extrapolating from the continuous systems case, I would expect uh, the discrete systems to also uh, follow the same logic. So, suppose you have a system uh, which takes an input x of n and gives an output y of n. So, if x1 and x2 are two inputs and y1 and y2 are the corresponding outputs, then if we uh, give the input x of n equal to x1 of n plus x2 of n to the system and if the output is y of n is equal to y1 of n plus y2 n for all x1 and x1 of n and x2 of n then uh, the system s should be uh, very good Pratik, that is a very good explanation. In fact, Pratik has very rightly observed that you could take the same idea from continuous systems. So, you have three experiments really to be done. You apply an input x 1 n and ask for its output y 1 n. You, in, you input x 2 n and ask for its output y 2 n and then you input x 1 n plus x 2 n. Remember, in these three times you are inputting different signals, so different discrete, it is not just points, it is just not just numbers. In fact, let me let me write that down clearly. So, what I am saying essentially is, firstly we like to adopt a different nomenclature. So, signals in discrete variable we will call sequences. So, x n is the input sequence. Now, the word sequence makes sense because it is a sequence of values indexed by the integers. You know, so the word sequence, you understand Pratik, sequence because you know unlike the continuous case where there is a continuum of values, you now have a discrete set. So, you know you can talk about the next one and the previous one, you could not do it in the context of continuous systems. So, therefore, you have x n as the input sequence and y n as the output sequence. So, we will use that word henceforth. So, as Pratik said, I have this discrete system, let me call it S as he did. I apply x 1 n, of course, Pratik abbreviated it, but I would not do that. I will say x 1 n produced y 1 n and then in the same system x 2 n produced y 2 n. And when the same system was given x 1 n and x 2 n added up as the input sequence, then what was produced was y 1 n plus y 2 n. And this happens for all possible x 1, x 2. This is very important. This is something which Pratik said which we must stress and emphasize. You see, you cannot just look at one particular, I have told you this before, you cannot just look at one particular instance of an x 1, x 2, look at what happens and then come to a conclusion. When you want to prove a statement, it must be proved independent of context or example. However, when you want to disprove it, suppose you want to show a system is not additive, it is adequate to take one counter example. If you wish to prove that everybody in a state is truthful, by looking at one truthful person, you cannot come to that conclusion. But if you wish to prove that that is not true, then looking at one liar is enough. That property holds here too. Anyway, 
Now, Pratik, you have given a formal explanation. Can you also take the tax example, you know the state where there was a tax levied on a service and explain physically what this additivity property would mean. So, the tax example was, let me explain the tax example to you. The tax example was that you had a service being provided by the state and that service of course, was applied, the tax applied for that service was true in all the states where it was given and the tax was applied for two intervals. In the first interval, alpha tax was applied, you know per person to whom service was provided and beta tax was applied for the second interval and for two intervals there was tax, after that there was no tax, right. And x of n was the population in the nth instant or nth interval during which you are making a tax calculation. So, you remember that we had this very simple relationship here, y of n which was the tax collected by the state was alpha times x n the tax paid in the first interval times the population in that particular interval plus beta times x of n minus 1. Now, please take this and explain what additivity means here. So, let us consider two states, uh, both of which have the same tax rules. Very if uh, x 1 of n is the population in the first state for the nth interval and x 2 of n is the population in the second state for the uh, same in, same in, uh, nth interval, right. then uh, we can uh, see this property in the following way. Suppose s is the system, uh, that is the way of calculating. So, as you said, s is the system that collects tax, that collects, that collects, collects tax, tax state wise. State -wise. Yeah. So, if x of n is the total, is the population of both the states together, then that will be equal to x 1 of n plus x 2 of n. Now, we, uh, we want to find out uh, what the um, tax collected will be for the same interval. So, from the previous slide, we can uh, see that y of n should be equal to alpha times x of n plus beta times x of n minus 1. So, putting in the value of x of n, uh, b which is equal to x, uh, x1 of n plus x2 of n, then we can see that we can split it up into uh, alpha of x1 of n plus alpha x1 x2 of n plus beta x1 n minus 1 plus beta x2 n minus 2 a, n minus 1. That's right. Now, aggregate the terms. So, this is um, alpha of x1 of n plus beta of x1 of n minus 1 plus alpha of x 2 of n plus beta x 2 n minus 1. Very good, that is correct. Which we can see is. Now, uh, now give this a name, yeah, what is this right. real? Yes. So, this actually is y 1 of n and this is y 2 of n. Fantastic. So, in fact, yeah, now can you interpret this? So, this actually is an additive system because yes. given two inputs, if you sum them up, outputs also get summed up. Very good. And so, this is true for any x 1 and x 2 of n. That is right. So, this s is additive. Very good. That is a beautiful illustration. Yeah, it is all congratulate Pratik on this. So, we will see more about these properties in the next discussion. Thank you.